Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I'm Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. By the grace of the Lord, he has led me back to some very old prophecies on the Master's Voice. Prophecies that I received, I think three of them on the same day, that would have been December 20, 22nd, 2020. And there was one that came a few days before, and I was reading this prophecy, and I was just amazed to see that the Lord has been talking about the world that is coming as far back as 2020, especially concerning money, this thing that we know as the Great Reset, and how we as people, this is for all people, so it doesn't matter what continent you're listening from, what nation you're li listening from, you're very welcome. This is not a localized prophecy. This is not a United States prophecy, except in maybe some small and particular ways of how certain things will be done here to make sure that the population is forced to become compliant with, with what Daniel was speaking about in many parts of his book, which is the beast system. The beast system is the final kingdom that we find in the book of Daniel, the kingdom of iron and clay. This iron and clay is multi-layered, that they will mingle themselves with the seed of men, that they is a subset. They are not human and they are not of us. And then seed of men, this is men, women, and children. And there will be a co-mingling in the final times that will have this cold, harsh, heartless, and extremely deceptive metal kingdom, meaning very reliant on technology, mixing with humankind who are the soft and malleable clay. Malleable means easy to move, easy to use. And I gave an example um, maybe some weeks ago or months ago when I was saying, what do you think will happen if you imagine an iron claw squeezing soft and wet clay? The clay will squeeze right through that metal and be cut up into strips. And that is what that evil metal kingdom will do. It will take human life by squeezing it until that life leaves the body. But I was saying, what do you think happens when clay is now hardened, when we put it into maybe a bowl or a gourd or a finished shape, and then you put that same metal arm and squeeze? The clay is going to resist for a while and then poof, it is going to shatter and go flying everywhere. And that is the kingdom that Prophet Daniel was talking about, iron and clay. So it was to my amazement because there are quite a few things that are going on and I'm hoping to be able to have the time set aside because the week is not looking like a video making week. I'm hoping to have enough time set aside today to at least make perhaps two or maybe three videos covering things that the Lord has been putting on my heart. So speaking of this metal kingdom, it will come with advanced technology that people will at first love very much and be very keen about and welcome. And there's going to come a bifurcation in the population whereby some people cannot wait to get into this new technology. And it's going to be the kind of technology that will be very hard to resist because it's going to offer enhancements, both visible and invisible to the body. It's going to end offer advanced methods of learning, advanced methods of healing, integration of the human mind with some of these things that Elon Musk is always talking about, Uplink or Starlink, whatever he calls it, where people's brains will be connected in such a way that you will be able to learn faster and be smarter. And because you feel smarter, you will think that those changes are of you. But these are actually false changes offered by the devil. And so people will want that. People will definitely definitely want to be healed of their cancers and their physical limitations. People will want to see what it feels like to be six foot five. They will engineer their babies that way. They will make the, the choices. I've covered all these things in so many prophecies. And all that remains is for the people who watch this channel to now make the investment of time and learn. But the bifurcation will come because there will also be people who will shun these things. They will stay away from these things. And I've shared many times that the intention is to press and push and starve this much smaller contingent out of existing society. I've talked about the fringes where because you won't have the credits and you won't have this and you won't have that. When you watch these movies, 
these sci-fi movies, what do you always see? That the people who live in the fringe are eating rats and they're like wearing these raggedy things and they're like, we are the resistance. And they've been resisting for like 30 years against some evil Optimus Prime kind of government. And this is what is intended. These things are not shown to us accidentally. And so we need to be people who are wise, who are listening to the God of our times. God is not only the God of our times, God is the God of forever. And God was talking to Daniel about these things, which is why Daniel said that when he saw the four beasts, it was the fourth beast that intrigued Daniel the most. Daniel knows what a leopard looks like and Daniel knows what a bear looks like, but Daniel was intrigued by the fourth beast that he did not even bother to describe because he did not have words for it. He just said it was different from all the other beasts and it had the ability to trample with its feet and it was exceedingly wicked. And that beast could not be constrained Daniel said that that beast could only be constrained when the one with woolly hair, the ancient of days, sat and opened the books and then consigned that beast to fire. Overcoming the beast system is not the work of any one human being, any one bunch of survivors, any one group of the sons of freedom or anything like that. God says that we are going to be so challenged in the final times. And this is why I constantly say that if you have found this channel through a family member, if you have found this channel through the algorithm, if you found this channel because you were crying out to God and saying, God, something is wrong. I feel something is wrong in Christianity. I feel something is wrong in my church. I want to know the truth. And then my face popped up on your recommended and you clicked this video or any of my videos, you cannot come to a place where God has determined to deliver you of deception and then begin to mourn for the world that is passing away. If you watch a video and you find that you have been deceived listening to the false prophets, there's no point in mourning. The solution is simple, repent and then depart out of their company. It's not to start moaning against God and saying things like, well, why does he allow the false prophets? Read your Bible. It's right there. The false prophets also are supposed to have their slice of the cake. The Bible says that false Christ, these are people who are literally going to present themselves as Christ in the flesh and the false prophets shall arise. And what does it say in Matthew 24? And deceive many. So you were one of the many. Why are you questioning God? Why has God allowed the wolves? The question is, why do you have an eight year old's discernment? Why are you one of the many who can be easily deceived? Now you cried to God and you said something is wrong and these people are draining my pockets and they keep trying to flash different forms of special holy this on all of us and then I'm having nightmares. God has brought you now to deliver you. Simply let go of the fallacy and be delivered. It is a process because there are much stronger and deeper games afoot, much more dangerous things. And I'm simply going to have to make these videos by his grace because this alien thing is just not going away. This thing is grieving my soul to the maximum. This thing is not a joke. Seeing these strange lights and aurora, it is not the blessing of um, special weather phenomena. It is the creeping near of a time. It is one thing to prophesy years ago that God said the increase of the colorful skies means something. It is another thing now to be alive in 2023, seeing things showing up all the time, such that different subscribers from around the world can write one person from different points of the world and say, I saw it this week. This is not good. God even brought to mind an old prophecy from 2019. It's called Desolations Are Determined. I think it's part one or part two. And he was saying that we will know we are in for it when even the people in Africa can see these signs. And as I came and sat at my desk today, preparing my soul, preparing my spirit, preparing to bring forth what I have received of the Lord, God was reminding me that he said that when people in Africa can see this big red planet, we should know that we are in trouble. And why is this? Because in Africa, traditionally, all they see is sunny blue skies and normal nighttime. Sunny blue skies and normal nighttime. 
It is not a place that eclipses come commonly. Most things are not visible there. These eclipses, darkened sun, these lunar eclipses, red moons, they do not traditionally show there. But I remember that little snippet from that prophet. Desolations are determined. A desolation is when everything is wrecked so bad that the only emotion your soul can have is hmm, sorrow and grieving. That is a desolation. To have everything destroyed until there is nothing to be happy about. He said that when this big red planet can be seen even in Africa, in countries like Botswana, South Africa, and Zimbabwe, which is at the southern tip of that continent, he said when those people can see this big red planet, then we should know. And the phrase he has always been using concerning the fallen is take heed to yourself for the devil is come down to you. Meaning that that Revelation 12 dragon and his cohorts are on the way to come and commune with us for real, to mingle themselves with the seed of men. But for now, we look at this place um, this was just brought to me by the Lord because I was not aware of these things and I had to do a lot of Googling after the prophecy, but I will give you the dream exactly as it was. This dream has some layers in here that the Lord has given me leave to talk about briefly. I will not go into them deeply, partly because they have not been fully opened to me. And so I do not speculate about God's things, but also partly because I do not want to take away from the main thrust of the prophecy. This prophecy is called Davos. And that button was a very blessed picture that God helps me to find to represent the great reset. Davos, December 20, 2020. And the banner scripture is this. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Revelation 17 and 13. And so I was sharing that I can't fully describe all the aspects of this dream whether of the, the nature of the strange being that I saw, this, this was a being shaped like a man, but as I will describe, this could not be any normal man of us. I also saw multiple dimensions in this dream, as in other worlds, either other worlds, I've spoken about multiple dimensions when I talk about the fallen, how the fallen are lying, um, aliens are lying, uh, their main storyline from survivors and other people that they've contacted, um, when, you, when you look at what's floating around so far uh, as known about them, their main lie is that they come from somewhere far away. And the Lord brought as, as a way to debunk this lie that they have consistently fed man. What the Lord brought forth is the story of the Gibeonites how the Gibeonites in the Bible, when Israel had come out of captivity and Israel was fighting here and fighting there and moving along, conquering the tribes, the Gibeonites were not exactly the strongest of the tribes. They were people who traditionally would ally with other kings to keep themselves protected. I've spoken how in the old days you had to be a fighting nation like Babylonia or Assyria or you know the kingdoms of the Chaldeans, those people, also the Egyptians, those people who were advanced in warfare and they were advanced in methodologies of war were quite strong, but there were other people who set up their communities and they were not that strong. And so they needed to ally. They needed to make um, alliances to keep safe. And the Gibeonites were such. So when they saw their traditional allies getting beaten, by the Israelites, they devised a scheme, a plan. They wore old, dusty clothing and then probably threw extra dust on it to make it more viable. They took old and moldy bread. They took wineskins that had dried out so much that they had burst at the bottom. And then they came and they were right next to Israel. They came and then they said, we are a people from a far away place. We are a people that have heard of your might and power, and we have journeyed much distance to come and seek you for an alliance. We are under attack in that far place that we have come from, and we come to ask you to, to be our allies, to help us. And Joshua looked at these people and did not seek the Lord before giving an answer or response to a request for an alliance or anything 
because Israel was in a strong position at that time, winning the battles. And this can often lead people into missteps, assumptions, and pride. And so Joshua looks at them and he prophesies unknowingly with his mouth because God told them not to be friends with anyone in the promised land. He said to wipe them all out, get rid of all of them. Do not mix with them. Don't give your daughters to marry their sons and don't take their daughters to marry your sons or they will lead you into whoredoms and idolatry. But in that moment of a wrong judgment call, Joshua prophesies and says, how do we even know that you are from afar? How do we know that you are not our neighbors nearby? And then they probably shook their clothes so that the dust could go into action and brought out the moldy bread and said, look, when we started to journey here, because we heard of you, the bread was fresh and hot, but now look at it. It's green and brown with mold, salmonella. And look, our water skins were full when we left, but now they're dried out. And look, they even have holes. And Joshua fell for that spiel. He fell for that lie. He made an alliance with them. And that is how he put the whole of Israel into trouble. So God gave me this to teach, to show that the fallen, the angels, um, not the angels, but the aliens that will come saying that they've come from other planet systems and whatever are lying. They are trying to bring all of God's creation into subjective disbelief for people to really believe that there's this and that that, and they live there and they've come here. And I knocked the wall and said that I live in a building with neighbors who are on the other side of the wall. They are not in any kind of far away world. If we look out our windows, the same street is outside. They're not in other dimensions. They're just on the other side and I cannot see them, but they're here in the world with me. That is what God gave me to explain dimensions. And so I was seeing this in the dream. And I have also seen that in this world, the world has dimensions. It has walls. God has shown me the walls and exactly into how many pieces the walls divide the world. So I have seen those things and I put them in the prophecy um, UFO skies part one. There's still other prophecies on the skies that I have to put up, but that was the first one describing the shape of the world and that the world does have walls. And that's what I was seeing. I was seeing multiple dimensions with multiple me, multiple me in the different sections. And in every section where I had to make a decision, I made the wrong one under the pressure and compulsion of this unseen being that came to talk to me about a coming financial crisis and how I should protect myself and keep myself safe. In every dimension where I saw a celestial, that celestial made the wrong choice except in one dimension. And this dream was not an easy dream to have. So let's go into it now. I was in a very fancy hotel and I was having a meeting with a man, not any kind of romantic encounter, but a very important business idea that this man wanted to present to me. So he had a laptop and he was making a full presentation. And I said that he had a screen with very complicated graphs with movement of money going up and down and other things. And it was, it was a venture, he said, to protect my future, to protect my finances and to protect my assets, all that I had. Now I was very rich in this dream. So I knew that this is not a, a dream because I was also in Europe. This took place in Europe at the top floor of one of those very fancy elite hotels. And I was wearing those frou-frou, you know, those frou-frou um, dressing gowns with the feathers and the ostrich and the fur at the thing and the here. And I was standing by very large bay windows, looking out into the city and listening to this man um, nodding along as he was speaking. And so he was speaking investments. And I wrote... I don't understand that talk in real life, and I did not understand it in the dream. There was a giant mountain-shaped graph that highlighted the movement of money in time across a bright blue screen. This man spoke to me about dollars, cents, and the future, how I should connect now before it was too late. 
He told me that he could set it all up for me and walk me through it. And when he was done, I would be set for life. He said, you'll miss the disaster and be okay. So I was listening, but I was not really hearing this man because the presence of this man scared me. This man was all black. I didn't say he was a black person or he was wearing black clothes or even if he was seated in shadow because it was early. It was like mid-morning brunch time and it was a beautiful sunny day. And so we were only using natural light in this suite. This man had no shape or form except to say that he was all blackness cut in the shape of a man. He did not have any physical features. This whole place was just the jet black color black, no distinguishable clothing. It was as if he had been cut out of black felt and then animated. And then he was sitting there and talking to me, everything else about him, all the stuff that he had, his laptop bag, everything was real stuff. This man was not made of texture. It was just blackness sitting there. And what was emitting from this man, me looking at a black shape, talking to me and moving its fingers and words coming out, it terrified me. And I was wondering if the man could tell I was terrified. And then all of a sudden I began to see these dimensions that I'm talking about. Let me explain. I began to see multiple celestials and multiple men in black, because that's what my heart was calling him. And I do not mean the American men in black that go and clean up after CIA and FBI stuff that they do. I mean a being. I began to see the same suite that I, that I was in with the same man and in the multiple dimensions, this man was at different stages of making the presentations in one of the rooms that I saw, he had just arrived and he was setting up his laptop and presentation. And I was wondering if he wanted anything to make him comfortable in another room. I had already served this man some snacks and drinks, and he was now seated and we were at the small talk in another I was sitting next to him in the chair, trying to look at the laptop and follow along. And in still other worlds, I was standing by the window, looking out and trying, if, trying to figure out if I should do what this man said to do or not. But I saw one dimension that stood out and this is what had happened. In that dimension, I had already pressed the button. So he had everything there and there was a button, which when I press the button, it means I sign on maybe my electronic signature or something. I'm not sure, but there I was offered a button and I should press the button. And then this venture would take care of my life, my finances and everything. I had allowed this man to convince me, but when I pressed the button, this man's entire nature became like a fox in front of a chicken. And in all the dimensions where I pressed the button and the transaction went through, my entire life was over. Every penny, every form of wealth that I possessed was gone. I became penniless in an instant. And as I was staring back at this man in shock, that faceless face was looking back at me and I began to hear these words now thumping in the dream in my spirit, Davos, the great reset, Davos, the great reset. And I was so terrified that I got up and I started running down the hallway. You know how it is in the movies, you're running down the hall. And I was seeking this friend of mine who is a pastor to tell him what I had done. I wanted to tell him they will offer you the great reset. I am poor and penniless. I have lost it all. Don't do what I did. Do not comply. Do not press the button. You will lose it all. But as I was running, I saw yet another dimension. And in that dimension, I was still thinking. I was at the stage where I was afraid of the man, but I had not yet pressed the button that gave him all my earthly wealth and left me a penniless woman. And I was trying as I was running as I, in the first dimension, saw into the final dimension where I had already pressed it and I was poor, in the second dimension, I saw the third one where I had not done it yet. The only place where I had not done it yet. And I was desperately trying to reach me in that dimension and tell me, don't do it. Tell him you need time to think. Tell him to come back. And then when he leaves, pack up everything that you are living with in this suite and leave the city forever so that he can never find you. Do not press that great reset button. But I could not reach myself. 
I was hoping to reach myself. I was not able to reach myself. Instead, I found this pastor friend strolling in the same hotel and I grabbed his hand and I said, the great, re the great reset, Davos, Davos, the great reset. Don't do it, pastor. Don't do it. When he offers you anything, do not do it or you will end up just like me. You will be a slave and you will have nothing. Don't say yes to that man. But the pastor did not understand what I was saying because this is often the case in my dreams. I see myself trying to warn people who look at me as if I am crazy. I see myself trying to warn people who always want to debate everything. People look at me like I haven't taken my meds in my dreams. And so the warning usually falls flat. And then the thing that I warned about always happens to the people. And so I began to weep in frustration because this man could not understand me. True sobbing. And then the Lord brought me gently out of that dream. And I was so relieved to find that the dream was not real. Mostly because I was free of that shadowy man who had come into the hallway and was following after me. Not because I had lost some imaginary millions of dollars. And the Lord began to speak to me. Please hear this. This is from December 2020. This is coming. The Great Reset a time of no more private wealth and property. Private wealth and ownership will be completely taken away. Money will fail. Money will be utterly taken away. All forms of finance, cash and credit and debits and futures, investments, tradings, savings, bonds, all existing forms and world systems of money even world systems of governance will be taken totally away and replaced with a new system, Davos, the Great Reset. A diabolical credit system, man ruling man from a computer screen. You will be given only what you need. Your entire life will be online. Everything about you will be seen through a lens that you have no control over. Nothing will be secret anymore. Nothing will be private. All of it will be watched 24 hours a day, and you will not be able to say a single thing without it being monitored and checked. Men will be as poor as church mice in this new system, and all will be utterly dependent on the government. Private wealth will be destroyed. Private property and ultra wealth this is the mega, mega billionaires that we have here in America, people who have independently made their, their fortune. This is what God is calling ultra wealth. He says it will all be reshuffled, reassigned, or taken away altogether. There is coming an event to take away all the money, all the current world financial and government systems, all the privately owned wealth will go to the state in the Great Reset. Look to yourselves. This means take heed, pay attention, and watch after your own life because the devil has come down to you. Revelation 12, 9 to 12, especially verse 12. So let us go back to this that God gave me as far back as 2020, talking about the failure of all monetary systems and also the failure of all governance systems. Where do we find this? in Revelation chapter 13 and also Revelation chapter 17, where it talks of 10 kings who for a single hour will give all their power to the beast. How many prophecies have I brought here to America? For instance, um, the recent prophecy called the meltdown of the banking system, the one that says, buy from me gold, that I said that I, I lived in a suburban area and a woman and her husband woke up at 6 a.m. to flee in their SUV, pulling a trailer behind them that was carrying so much physical cash and gold. They, they, that couple that looked so normal next to me were quiet millionaires and they were fleeing with gold bullion. And I said that I heard a voice system speaking over America, naming person after person after person that has gold. Why? Because the places that people buy gold are going to be forced to give up their client list and the government's going to know exactly who had the gold, who shipped it and where it is. It was being announced on a loudspeaker, whether it was a speaker in the spirit for me to hear or whether it was actually going out over the emergency broadcast system, because that is what I heard. And I said that when people fled, everything they could not take 
from a big asset like a sailboat all the way to small personalized things like amethyst or or topaz um, or diamond cufflinks and uh, perhaps bespoke golf clubs. Everything the government said that it was all forfeit and they took it all. And I said they redistributed it and the place I saw it re being redistributed is among them and their friends. God has been saying these things. The great reset is a time of no more private wealth and property. I brought the prophecy here and God said that when Kamala Harris takes office, when Kamala Harris takes office, this is the time that the constitution of the United States is going to suffer its greatest blows. I spoke of how you can have an existing law that says you have the rights. The second amendment gives you the rights to protect your property by using a weapon. And we all know that a weapon brings direct deadly force. So second amendment, if we just honest, it gives you the right to use deadly force to protect yourself and even to guard against what the constitution calls a rogue government, a government that's going to go nuts, a government that will rise. This nation gives the right for an armed militia to rise up and, and counter power, hungry, bloodthirsty, dangerous overreach in government. But what else did I say? If an existing law is here, they're going to use executive orders to destroy the power of the existing law. If it says you can have your gun, what they're going to do is legislate that you can't have guns in the schools, you can't have guns at the movies, you can't have guns at um, the stores, you can't have guns at the yoga spaces, you can't have guns at the warehouse places, you can't have guns anywhere. And pretty soon, every single place of the country will be gun-free zones. So fine, keep your gun but you're not allowed to carry the gun anywhere by reason of executive order. And this is how executive order, the Lord called it ruling by decree. This is how ruling by decree destroys the original law. And I said that after some time, when you have a law on the books, that's not doing anything, then they move to referendum and they say all in favor of getting rid of the second amendment. And they're just going to vote among themselves and get rid of it. And the nation will now be disarmed like Australia and Canada and almost all the African countries and all the, almost all the South American countries where nobody actually carries licensed firearms except the crooks who don't bother to obey gun laws. A nation must be disarmed for the great reset to advance. And this is the last one that is still fighting for its rights to keep that. And the Lord has already said that that fight to keep this right to protection will not be successful. This is why militias will arise in America in future times to fight against this government that will simply lose its mind. And when I say government, I'm not speaking of this one. People are so stuck in, in their theories. You will miss what God is trying to say to you to save you. Well, is Kamala coming this term? Next term, did you not learn in school that everyone who is sitting in power is allowed two terms as long as they don't perish before the race? Everyone who is an incumbent is allowed two terms. But the need to add and subtract will have you banging your head against the wall, thinking that God is obligated to do things when you think they should happen. And he said, this is why this channel, these messages will confound the proud. You might be saved, but as long as you are proud, the prophecies will stumble you because you will keep coming up with theory after theory and you will just not be able to figure them out while another person next to you is quietly grazing humbly on what God is telling them. A person came and left a comment that shows that they have figured out things perfectly and I did not say a word to that person. I did not say well done to that person. I was stunned. The comment that they left showed that they fully understand what God's timing is in many things. And I thought, well, Lord, you still have one or two who know how to listen and who know how to marry reality with prophetic and not stumble themselves. There is a plan to take away everything. 2020, God is saying money will fail. 
Weren't these people doing bull market and now's the time to buy and now's the time to dive into the housing market? Come on in, the water's warm and God is saying 2020. Money will be useless. Cash and credit and debit, futures, investment, trading, bonds, all these things that I don't know much about. He said every existing form of money and all war world systems of money will be taken away. Even world systems of governance Revelation 13, the beast with the many heads and the many crowns. How long have I been saying it here that these people are not interested in your need to have a passport for your country? It will all be done away with because they are bringing in the era of the green global citizen where we're all brothers and sisters, despite the fact that in real life there are massive cultural differences that cause problems even within, within a nation or between neighbors, Christian next to Muslim, two or five different ethnicities that have never lived next to one another in Africa, but the scramble for Africa cut it up and then put it back with wrong bandages, wrong borders. And so hostilities flare up because peoples are so diverse, but in this new global citizen world, this is a world without borders. This is a world where nobody cares about where you were born. We will actually be living in Acts chapter 17 and verse 26. By force, one currency, one form of governance under one man declaring himself that he is God. And people think they will not live to see this because the wrath of God. This is not the wrath of God. The wrath of God is intolerable. We're not there yet. It is not wrath to punish sinful countries and to give them over to the Satan that they have welcomed in almost every area of life. That's not wrath, that's just just desserts. And the church is choking on that particular piece of potato pie because they can't understand how the reckless love God would do this to them, but he's going to do it to chastise the wicked, which humanity is. And God will prove that we are wicked. Because when they bring all these suggestions and all these things, people will be like, your own children are socialists in your home and you know it. Your children support every maniacal idea that the government comes up and then they tell you that you are a dinosaur and you're hateful and you're transphobic, blackphobic, dysphobic. You're all the phobics in your own children's eyes. Why should the prophecy not speak God's truth? Why is it shocking? Is it because it's coming from me? I tell you that the church has hatred in its heart for God. Why? Because God says it to me. They hate me, Celestial. And as you do this work, you will see it. Then I see it. A point comes up and the church as one. Pew. Why are you judging this person? Because God has judged them first, but God does not even have the rights in the eyes of his church to judge. God only has one job, to love and to forgive. He must love and he must forgive at all costs, unless how can he be the God? that Benny Hinn and Joseph Prince have taught you. How can he possibly be the true God if he dares to say this is evil? I shall remove it from my sight. God will teach us who he is during these times of threshing fire and refinement, and we will learn it and we will be quiet until we can say, worthy are you, O God, and you are just when you judge. You're gonna take away everything at least that is their plan. Just a moment, please. This thing went to sleep. Davos the Great Reset, a diabolical credit system of man ruling man from a computer screen. And I've spoken of this. I didn't share in full about the dream that I had. In that dream, we had suffered a loss in my family. I was wearing black. I'm not putting this dream on the, on the thing. I felt in my heart today to share some dreams and I will. We had suffered a loss in my family. We had suffered a loss of a relative. And so I was wearing black and my screen would not allow me to order anything in color. We still needed to wear face masks for some reason. And so I was trying to order a new 10 pack of face masks and it would not show me any face masks in color. It would only show me black face masks because the computer knew that there was a loss in my family and I was not allowed 
to get a plaid mask or a blue paisley mask or anything. I had to order black ones because I was in the compulsory time of mourning. And the work was through the computer. And the computer was alive. If you turned your eyes away too long from your console, you would feel something pulling you back to focus on the work. You had to, it was like hands behind your head, leaning you until you had to give your attention to the computer. And I said, that's how we got fed. By the volume of work you did, it would release tokens. And with the tokens, you bought food. And the tokens that they were giving were not enough for real food. Please listen, if you worked really well, you could get tokens that would add up to allow you to buy one thing in those days real food was called real meals real fo food like a real corn on the cob with real butter on it they were called real meals and if you worked really hard you could get a token and to buy real meals and the real meal that i favored was broccoli with real butter on it that was my favorite. Fresh steamed broccoli with real butter on it. That's what you could get. But the food that they were feeding the masses was not real meals. It was some kind of synthetic, tastes like, look like, replacement sort of. And it was a lot of work. It took all your time and it was virtual. And I said that the old people struggled. These are old prophecies from 2019 that you can find if you go on the blog and look under, just go to the search box and write the beast. And then you will find all the prophecies and look at the older ones, the beast part one and the beast part two, where God described the society perfectly. And I said that my mother was struggling with that technology. She was struggling with that stuff. And yet this thing was linked to food. And so I did her work and mine. Because there is no way under the stars and sun that I was going to leave her to not get her tokens and credit for food. I spoke back before the elder abuse and the horrible things that were done to older people in COVID. I wrote on the blog in 2019 that you that keeps liking to bundle your elderly into the homes, do not cry when they are harmed in there. I said, when you go and leave them in the care of euthanasia artists and people who will tell you, I don't know how she got a hold of the pills. Anyway, just sign here and we'll release the body to you. Do not cry. Because the Lord showed me a vision where they were putting the old people through into the homes. He showed me a house like this with a front entrance and a back entrance. And in the front entrance, they the, the, uh, the nurses and the aides would, would wheel an elderly person into the home and the family was like, and then in the back, on, on the back exit that the family couldn't see, I saw the empty wheelchairs being cast out there because the living people who came in using them were no longer alive. And so they were just throwing out the empty prosthetics and the walking sticks and the things. I did say these things a long time ago, that this beast system does not have use for who is not visually stunning that AI will be deciding what looks good and what is useful. What is the ideal optimal male? What is the ideal optimal female? You will be given only what you need. Life will be given to you as online credits. And I spoke through the credits. I spoke about the credits that the Lord showed me in times to come. The whole need for even a repository for banking is going to be integrated into people. And when he's using me as an excuse for this or using me as an example in the dream, I'm not thinking, oh, that's me. I saw that on my arm, the money was running. You will not have control over this money, this universal online cloud wallet. If you live in an apartment, if you have a mortgage to pay, the bank will simply draw the money out. You will not pay the mortgage. Your mortgage will be debited out as a matter of course. Your rent will come out as a matter of course. Your employer is going to put the money in and all these people are going to be able to garnish what you make without asking you. And you will just get alerts on your arm, a long system of, of dark blue binary numbers. 
so that no matter what your skin tone is, you can see those dark blue numbers running and you will see your final amount after all the debits are done and you will see what you have left. Through the recent prophecies, you can understand that this type of financial system is going to do away with all human independence. If you are person A and your sink breaks and your neighbor is person B and he's a plumber of about 40 years, even if he's retired, you know you can go and ask Phil, hey Phil, could you come over and take a look at the sink, old buddy? And you know that if you give Phil three or $400 to redo the entire pipe system, it is cheaper than getting in the guy with the drainage and everything that's gonna cost you $2,000. There will be no side earning, no side nothing. All of it, he said, nothing will be secret, nothing private, watched 24 hours a day, and you will not be able to say a thing without having it monitored and checked. And I spoke about all these prophecies in the future about how the world, especially this nation, um, let me not extrapolate. Let me keep it exactly to what God said, that America will be a nation of snitches because there will be incentives for snitching on your neighbor. If you see something, say something. People will live here as if it is natural to keep picking up the phone and reporting to authority figures what the person next door is doing. They already tried it in COVID and it worked pretty well. Please let us know if you see your neighbors barbecuing. That is not allowed as the deadly airborne virus is outside. People just fell right into that trap because of the smallness of their hearts and the even tinier understanding that they're working with. Every single thing that happens is a beta test. They simply want to know who will be on board, who will help, who will do it. And the answer is too many people to make life in the future comfortable or safe. And so when I woke up, I did some digging. Remember this was 2020. This is where I, where I found this ad. You'll own nothing and you will be happy. They took it down because there was backlash, but these things are not conspiracy. They have posted in front of us that men will own nothing, that people will have no control over their lives, that the whole world will be smart. The world will be smart. You will be tracked in your own home by gadgets that you don't want and you can't get rid of. God is saying this in 2020 and I had a dream. It's not even been a week. I think it's maybe less than 10 days. I had a dream and the title of the dream is the coming age of apps. In that dream, I saw that apps were now compulsory. So it's no longer you go to the Apple store, you go to the Google store and you'd order you bring down apps like, okay, I want Facebook. Okay, I don't want Instagram. I don't want Twitter. Okay, I want my bank's app, but I don't want this. I don't want these games. Apps were mandatory. Why? Because every aspect of life had been handed over to apps. Every aspect of human life was being run by apps. If you wanted human life, the apps had to be downloaded and it was now no longer a choice. It was by control. You were forced to. And I spoke about this in an old prophecy. Um, I can't remember the name, but I spoke about it in that, um, in, a, in an old message where I said that I saw that um, the Vs, the Vs were being given on an app, but it wasn't just this last controversial V. It was all the Vs. And there were a ton in those days, a ton. The app would be on your phone and you could open it and you would see every V that you were supposed to have from birth until whenever. They were all listed and the app knew if you had had it or not and would tell you, hey, why don't you get this one? You, you're falling behind in it. It was in that app that God revealed how the, the V that everybody fights about was going to be rolled out in places we have never traditionally seen them giving these things before at the green grocers, at the pharmacies, things that are only supposed to happen in the hospital. He showed that they would be happening in the most unbelievable places and did we not see that happen? That in Manhattan, they will set up a booth in the street, people, and give that to you. And people see people lining up, QR codes, waiting. How long's the line? Okay, only 10 more people in front of me. In the street, you that are older, when were you inoculated in the streets outside Macy's by a 22-year-old non-medical professional? Just a little bit of hand sanitizer and change your life forever. 
God gave me that dream. And to this day, it still happens. So I saw that, oh, I just spoke of this, that we will have work to do, assigned work. And I just shared the dream um, that my mother was not tech savvy, but I was doing her work and mine so that she could get credits released to buy food. And I saw that the food that was available to us was repulsive and very evil and also very small portions. So I'm going to stop it here. It was because of this that I did research and found this very arrogant and out of shape man called uh, Klaus Schwab. And Time Magazine was carrying the Great Reset. It was all the rage in um, 2020, just as bold as you please. This Time Magazine cover is from November, November 2nd to November 9, 2020. So this was a whole month before, before God brought this to my mind. And so may we be wise as serpents and as innocent as doves. Matthew 10 and 16, the Lord said to us, occupy until I come. This is Luke 19 and 13. The Lord also said, only he who endures till the end shall be saved. This is Matthew 24 and 13. This tells you that the Jesus we serve, the true Jesus, is not expecting anything to interject during the time period that things that we need to endure will be taking place. These types of scriptures mean do not shrink back. They mean stop fainting early every time you hear new news. They mean rise up and learn how to rest on your most holy faith because I have already told you that faith is the only victory that you will need to conquer this world. I told you, will I even find any faithful ones among you when I come back? Therefore, wait for me with patience and get ready to adjust to whatever's coming that needs adjusting to. I did not tell you to quit so early. Arise and occupy till I come. And that is the prophecy, Davos, December 2020. And I will now move on to some of the other prophecy as time allows. So God bless you. And until I see you again, thank you for being with me. I am Celestial and you can find everything you need to know about this ministry in the description box below. And I will just mention this, this once on camera. I extremely don't want to do this, but I have to. Apparently some person out there is committed to making fraud accounts and asking people to send money to an orphanage in Nigeria, which you can see I am here in New York City. If you want to know if it is this channel interacting with you, simply look at the channel name. Every channel on YouTube has a dark field, a gray or a black field around the name. If it turns out that you don't see that, can you please publicly rebuke that person? It will help me so that in the off days, when I come to check the comments, I will see that this person has been publicly rebuked, outed as a scammer, a liar, a fraud, just a thing coming to try and bring the channel into disrepute. And then I will be able to delete and block them. I have already blocked just from January to March, 20 of these accounts, and it was countless more last year. So I can't keep um, putting these things um, in the video because these videos are long lasting and I really don't want to put um, all kinds of things in them. I'm much more concerned about the edification and the spiritual growth that you can get from these videos. So look underneath the channel. There's always a blurb that tells you what every video is about. There is always the link for the prophecy. If it's a written prophecy, the link will be there so that you go back and read it. You will internalize these things better when you read rather than just relying on the videos only. You have to couple these things with your own prayer. You have to couple these things with your own Bible study. You will never be able to survive in the end times relying only on the impartation and the edification that comes out of the prophecies. You need to build your own faith. As he said, rise up and rest upon your most holy faith. And faith, as we know, comes by hearing and hearing that true word of God. So thank you for being with me and God bless you. Thank you to all of you who support the channel. Thank you all, all of you who give a blessing to me for the work that I do. I'm appreciative of it and I pray that the Lord will return it to your hands. 
many fold. If you are using Cash App and your gift is not accepted, please can you just cancel it? Because I've shared many times that my Cash App is just not set up for um, what people are actually using it for and sending to me. So it's it's not personal and Cash App doesn't give me a way to communicate with you to let you know. So if you could just cancel it, look in the description box if you want to be a blessing. It tells you how. And I will be back with another video as time allows. So God bless you and until I see you again, Goodbye.